guys my name is priyesh as you all know so we are stepping up to the part 2 of this video if you haven't watched the part 1 yet the link to that video is given in the description you can watch that so let's start the part 2 so today we are learning the part 2 as i told you the topic today we are going to discuss is sexual reproduction in plants so let's start in this video we will be looking at sexual reproduction in plants did you know that they are an estimated 390900 plant species known to science this diversity of plant species is in part due to sexual reproduction in plants sexual reproduction is carried out in the flowers The flowers contain the sexual organs. Let's start with labeling the different parts of a flower. The petals and the sepals help protect the flower bud and can be brightly colored or scented to attract pollinators. The stem and the receptacle are the parts that connect the flower to the rest of the plant. The stamen is the male part of the flower. It consists of an anther where pollen is produced. and the filament which is the stalk that supports the anther these structures are responsible for the production and the positioning of pollen the male gametes the female part of the flower is called the carpel and this consists of three parts the stigma a sticky landy for pollen the style where the pollen grain descends and the ovary where the female gametes or sex cells are located Within the ovary, ovules produce female gametes. So, how does pollination work? Pollination is a transfer of pollen from the male anther of one flower to the female stigma of another. Flowers can be pollinated in different ways: by wind and water, or by pollinators such as insects, birds, and other animals. Flowers pollinated by pollinators are structurally different from those pollinated by wind or water. Look at the differences in size, scent and color of the petals and the positioning of the stamen and style. Here are some key differences. Why do you think they are different? Did you know that pollinators are very important to our food supply? They pollinate plants that are responsible for bringing us one out of every 3 bites of food. Once a plant has been pollinated, fertilization can occur. Fertilization results in the production of seeds. A mature pollen grain containing two male sex cells has landed on the female stigma of the same species. The pollen grain grows a pollen tube that goes down the female style to the ovary, where it enters through an opening called the micropyle. The male sex cells travel from the pollen grain down to the pollen tube to the female ovule. Here, one male sex cell fuses with the female egg, fertilizing it. This develops into a seed. The other male sex cell attaches to two cells in the embryo sac, forming an endosperm. This provides the starchy food for the seed to grow. The ovary enlarges and becomes a fruit. surrounding the internal seeds the fruit and seeds are dispersed in many ways some even by humans where they will again grow into a new plant under the correct conditions completing the long cycle of sexual reproduction in plant so there we have sexual reproduction in plant pollination has to happen before fertilization the male pollen is produced in the anther where it is then dispersed during pollination The female parts of the flower are the stigma, style, and the ovary. So, guys, part three of this video will be coming soon. So, stay subscribed for my channel. So, that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this part.